The each function provides a really easy way to loop through a set of nodes that you might have selected with a jQuery selector. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I have a couple divs here, and these particular divs have some styles. You can see we have a, a red div and a blue div, but I'm just going to loop through all divs in this particular uh, document that may have that particular selector, either blue or red. So to do that, we're going to come up into our ready. I'm going to strip out the code we had. And when the ready is called and the DOM is ready to go, then we're going to go ahead and do the selector. So we're going to go ahead and say, I want to select the div blue div and div red div. And then we can say each. Now you'll notice uh, as I do each, we can automatically, as I showed earlier in the slides, we can go in and do the function. And so the function can actually take two parameters we can pass the uh, index and we can pass the element that you might be wanting to grab. Now, I mentioned earlier that I just prefer to use the this keyword, but you can do you know whatever you want there. So let's go ahead and end this. All right, now from here, we might want to go in and just pop up some information uh, about that particular item. Now, what I'm going to do though, instead of showing an alert, let's go ahead and add an ID here called output div. And that's just going to have nothing inside of it. But what I'm going to do is go in and update output div uh, with the text inside of these two divs that we're going to select. So if we go down to those, you'll see that we just have blue div and we have red div. So not a whole lot going on there. But I want to show that when we update the HTML of this, um, you know, there's different ways to do this. So First thing I'm going to do is I could come in in the loop and say, let's go find the ID selector called output div. Now that would work and that would work great, except keep in mind, it's going to do that every single time that we loop through. May not be what we want, of course, and it's definitely not performant. So it would be better to cache this outside of the loop. And that's just one of those things when you get into jQuery, uh, you need to be careful of that because you might be in a loop and you try to do some different types of selectors and if, you, if for instance you did a selector like this just div for some reason inside of a loop it's gonna scan the entire document module um, document object model every single time you go through that loop obviously not a good thing so what you can do instead is we can cache that up top highly recommended that you do that so what we'll do here is I'm just going to grab the text and uh, we'll update the HTML. Now, there's another tip you can do with this as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and do it one way and then I'll wrap up by showing a different way. So let's go do output.html. And then we're going to set the value of the HTML um, to whatever outputs HTML is. Okay. We want to grab what the current value is, plus, let's go ahead and add in a BR, plus we want to grab index, plus, and then we'll grab the this to grab the value that we're uh, currently iterating through. So we'll say this, and then we'll do text. That'll just grab the text value of this particular item. So we're going to grab whatever HTML had for the output, whatever the current value is, which the first time through will be nothing, of course. Then we're going to append a BR, then we're going to add the index, and then we'll add the actual text. And just to make it a little bit more readable, let's go ahead and add in one item there. So to review, we're going to go in with a, a selector. We're going to select all blue div divs and all red div divs. And of course, these are the CSS selector, but we're going to be specific. We're then going to do an each on the set that's returned. Now that should only return these two items uh, that you see right there. We should get that div and we should get that div. Once those divs are returned, we're going to loop through each one. That's going to pass us the index of each one. We're then going to write to an output div, but we're going to cache it. We're going to grab it first before we do the loop. Update its HTML, but we don't want to lose what's already in there. So we're going to grab the current HTML do a BR, and then write out the index and the text. So barring any typos there, let's go ahead and run this. 
and you'll see it did work. We get zero blue div and one red div. So not real impressive output, but it did work properly. Now, that's still a little bit messy and we're actually having to update the DOM of the, the HTML, which is ultimately in the DOM of the output every time. This is also not good for, for performance in general. What would generally be better is we might wanna just say HTML, create an HTML variable here, and we can come in and say HTML, we could just do plus equals, a BR, the index, and then uh, this dot text. And we'll get rid of that last bracket there, or parenthesis. Okay, then when we're done, we can actually grab the output. Now we don't need it until the end here. So we're gonna come and now we'll say output.html is, and then we'll give it our HTML. Now this is gonna be even better than the previous one, because the previous one, although we had cached the output uh, div, and we weren't you know, grabbing that selector every single time through the loop, that was good, but we were updating the HTML of that particular uh, object, which means it has to touch the DOM every time it loops through. Now we're only looping through two things, but imagine you had a table and you're modifying the TRs or TDs or whatever it may be, and you have a lot of those that's definitely not the best performance. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and build up our string first as we loop through, grab that index, grab the text, then once the string's built up, we'll go ahead and assign that to the HTML property. Now that gives us the best of both worlds. We've cached the object and we don't update the DOM until we're ready uh, to update the DOM. So it's one shot, much faster. So let's go ahead and run that. We should get the same output and you can see we do. Uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think where did the undefined come from here. Uh, oh, it's because it was undefined at first. So let's set that to uh, actually empty strings. Run it again. And there we go. So we get the zero and the red. All right. So that provides an excellent way to easily iterate through nodes. I also showed in the slides you certainly could pass the element that's being looped through here but then you'd still have to wrap it. Um, this ultimately will give us the same exact result. You can see there. But I don't know, my take on it is, you know, why put extra text there and there have to match it when you could just do this. So 99% of the people you see out there doing this, including myself, we'll just go ahead and do it this way. So that's an example of the each and a couple tips and tricks for you as well when you're doing the each. So my advice is be really, really careful on what you put inside of your each block in the each anonymous function here, because keep in mind, it's gonna call that every time. So you wanna keep that as minimal as possible.